Dear colleagues, as we unfortunately had to cancel this year's World Congress in Montreal, we thought it would be a good idea to at least share some highlights from the virtual Congress that took place in February. Before the video starts, I would like to announce that the 2022 World Congress in Taipei, Taiwan will take place from June 9th to the 12th. I look forward to seeing you there in person and now please enjoy the video. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel below for free so you can watch more videos in the next weeks. Thank you. Hello, uh, it's a pleasure to be at this um, virtual conference, although it would have been nice to present these data personally in Taiwan. So I'm afraid we'll just have to do with this uh, virtually. So today I want to talk about the hormonal treatment effects of gender affirming hormone treatment uh, on the transgender brain. And these are preliminary data from the Enigma Transgender Persons Working Group. What does GHD in transgender persons look like? Well, transgender women uh, are male sex assigned at birth, but identify as a woman. Um, they receive estradiol orally with parental um, or transdermal route, as well as anti-androgen and or progesterones uh, to suppress testosterone secretion. And this kind of treatment regimen uh, promotes development of breast tissue, body fat redistribution, and uh, male pattern hair growth. Um, uh, prevention of male pen and hair growth, excuse me. Um, transgender men um, are female sex assigned at birth, but identify as a man. Uh, they receive testosterone, either orally, intramuscular, subcutaneous injection, or via transdermal application. And this testosterone application promotes growth of facial and body hair, deepening of the voice, uh, reduction in body fat. Now the first results at the cortical level, um, there are some regions and um, looking at uh, various sites of the lobes. Um, so we can see, for example, at the prefrontal um, or the frontal lobe, we can see, and essentially the pattern is pretty much the same for everything I'm going to show you. So the, the main take home message is that the effects are stronger for transgender women than they are for transgender men. Both of them are showing findings that are going in the direction towards the identified uh, gender. Um, so you can see this illustration here, for example, in the superior frontal gyrus. I've only shown here the left side, but this is uh, exemplary also. You have the same similar effects on the right side. And you kind of can see here very nicely, especially in the uh, superior frontal gyrus, that uh, transgender women and cisgender men start off the same. And then with treatment, transgender women um, reduce their volume, kind of going towards their identified gender. Um, you'd have, however, no effect and no change at all in transgender men, and they are similar to um, sex assigned at birth. And this pattern you kind of can see here uh, also in the post-central uh, post gyrus and the pre-central gyrus, uh, inferior parietal volume as well, um, and also um, in the left frontal pole, you had no change at all. So all groups were more or less of the same. And in the left fusiform gyrus, you actually had an also an, a slightly different pattern where um, the transgender women start off similar to the cisgender women, but then also show a decrease in volume and they're at the end similar to the cisgender men. So that was the only um, exception here to this pattern. The ventricular system here, we only saw changes for the transgender women and what the effect was that it was a drastic increase in ventricular volume as you can see in the lateral ventricle here or in the third ventricle, fourth ventricle, always increasing in volume for the transgender women with no changes in transgender men. Um, and while this may be concerning at the same time, it's worth, worth noting that the transgender women started much lower than the, their sex assigned at birth, so that they're actually, um, during the treatment, yes, increasing in volume, but they're approximating, at least in lateral uh, ventricle and fourth ventricle volume, that of uh, cisgender men, um, while in the third ventricle, they're slightly larger. So here it is not true that they're actually 
going towards their identified gender, but they're, if you so want, actually going towards their sex assigned at birth or even going um, above it. So what are the very cautious first conclusions we can draw from this? Well, that GHT shifts brain volumes in the direction of the identified gender. However, the shifts are highly regionally specific. Generally speaking, transgender uh, women um, show greater shifts than transgender men. Um, in transgender men, GHT appears to help to increase volume from a let's say disadvantaged neurobiological starting position by that, I mean, they had the lowest volumes um, pre-GHT so that, as I said, with GHT, they're actually um, normalizing or they're coming um, further up towards uh, um, the other groups. And there is a strong enlargement of ventricular volume in transgender women that may potentially result in neurocognitive changes of adjacent brain regions and that would have to be assessed with a neuropsychological assessment and see what this uh, specifically means uh, and what conclusions can be drawn from it. Uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, my name is Pia baldinger melich and I work as a senior physician at the Department of Psychiatry and Psychotherapy at the Medical University of Vienna in Austria. And I'm very pleased to present a study which was performed by my colleagues and myself at the Neuroimaging Labs of Vienna in close collaboration with the uh, Department of Psychiatry and Psychotherapy in Munich. We also know from previous uh, multivariate pattern analysis that we are able to predict biological sex um, using cortical thickness uh, with an accuracy of 83%. So what we aim to do was to identify uh, neuroanatomical models of sex, but also gender identity by comparing cis and transgender individuals that were hormone naive using MVPA and structural MRI data. And based on the current literature, we hypothesized that first, we would be able to um, detect a clear sex differences in brain, sex difference in brain structure of cis male and female, and that uh, this um, difference in brain structure will be less expressed in transgender individuals. Secondly, we were optimistic to find a distinct neuroanatomical signature of um, gender identity and gender incongruence uh, based on uh, neuro neuroanatomy. So these are our results. As you can see here, uh, we have the, the model performances subsumed in the table. As initially hypothesized, the binary classification models trained in our sample of 121 individuals correctly classify women and men in cisgender individuals with a balanced accuracy from, uh, of 83%, which is actually very uh, in line with the literature. But in transgender subjects, our sex classifier only performed with a balanced accuracy of 67%, which is 15% and thereby significantly lower uh, than in cisgender subjects. Then, to determine whether uh, these significant cis and transgender sex classifier could be va validated when applied to the transgender and cisgender sample respectively, this is what you see here, they, both, they, work, they still worked in both ways. For external validation, we applied, we, we applied our cisgender sex classifier on depressed uh, patients and still um, the, the classifier worked with a balanced accuracy of 74%, which was not significantly different um, from the cisgender sex classifier. However, in transgender, uh, sorry, when using the transgender sex classifier on depressed patients, um, it didn't work anymore. We couldn't discriminate men and women in the depression sample. Finally, when applying this, the cisgender sex classifier on individuals undergoing hormonal treatment, four weeks and here four months, um, it still worked to uh, discriminate men and women. However, it was slightly but significantly lower. The performance was lower than at baseline. So to uh, sum up uh, our results, we show a significantly lower classification performance in transgender 
compared to cisgender individuals re in regard to sex, which implies an interaction between sex and gender on a neuroanatomical level. However, the brain structure of transgender individuals still resembles more the brain structure of persons sharing their biological sex rather than of individuals sharing their gender identity. However, the neuroanatomy of trans women might be more um, sensitive to changes in regard to their gen uh, gender identity. Also, this pattern that underline, underlies sex in the brain is not limited to single regions, but is rather a sexual dimorphic widespread pattern throughout the brain. Regarding gender identity, uh, we were not able with our models to define patterns uh, discriminating uh, individuals um, in regards to their gender identity or the fact whether uh, they are gender incongruent. However, we cannot exclude that region-specific volume differences, as described in the literature, are present. Gender identity might um, exhibit a more subtle uh, neuroanatomical signature um, that might be masked by sex effects in our study. Also, um, gender identity might rather be mirrored in functional connectivity, for example, or white matter.